There are three main variants of the minor scale, the natural minor scale, the harmonic minor scale, and the melodic minor scale. There are other types of minor scales too, such as pentatonic minor, Hungarian minor, and others, but today we're just going to be talking about these three. I'm going to write out each of these scales with C as the tonic or root note, so let's start with the C natural minor scale. I also wrote out a C major scale for you on top so you could see how the two scales differ from one another. Now, as you can see, the C natural minor scale has a, a flattened third, sixth, and seventh note when it's compared to the major scale. And what I mean by that is if I were to label the scale in numbers, if I were to number them, each note in the scale, the third note, the sixth note, and the seventh note have been flattened when you compare it to the major scale, right? Instead of E, we have E flat. Instead of A, we have A flat. Instead of B, we have B flat. Now, when you hear someone refer to a minor scale without any specification, they are usually referring to the natural minor scale. Okay, so you can think of the natural minor scale as sort of like the default minor scale. It's also the same scale as the Aeolian mode in modal music. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. I'll be making lots of videos about modes later, so stay tuned. Now, natural minor scales also have relative major scales that share the same notes. For example, B flat major and G minor are relative scales. I'll write them out so you can see. Now, if you look at these two scales, B flat major and G minor, you can see that they actually have the exact same notes in them, right? They have all natural notes except for a B flat and an E flat. See? B flat and E flat. The rest of them are natural notes. And actually, they're going in the same order as well. The notes are going in alphabetical order. They're just starting at different places. This G minor scale is starting on the note G, and this B flat major scale is starting on the note B flat. And that's because the note that you start a scale on is actually very important. It really matters where we start a scale. Um, so let me play them for you so you can hear them. So the B flat major scale sounds like this. And the G minor scale sounds like this. They sound very different, right? One of them sounds like a minor scale and one of them sounds like a major scale, yet they have the exact same notes in them. And that is what we call relative scales or relative keys. So we would say that B flat major is the relative major of G minor, and we would say that G minor is the relative minor of B flat major. And what type of minor scale is this relative G minor scale? It is a natural minor scale. So whenever you hear someone referring to the relative minor scale, they are always referring to a natural minor scale, not one of the other types of minor scales, which I'm going to show you later in this video. So relative minor scales are always natural minor. If you're still not clear about what relative minor scales and keys are, I have a video that goes into a lot more detail about them in the description below. Now let's look at the harmonic minor scale. So I'm going to write out the notes in a C harmonic minor scale. Now, I want you to look carefully at the C natural minor scale and the C harmonic minor scale, okay? And which note do you see is different between those two scales? In the C harmonic minor, we have a raised seventh note. And so I'm saying seventh note, I mean the seventh note in the scale, which is B flat, has been raised by a half step or a semitone, okay? Because what happens to the note B flat when we move up a half step? We get to the note B, right? So that's what I mean when I say it has a raised seventh degree, okay? So that's the only difference between the two. Otherwise, the rest of the notes are the same. So let's listen to what these two scales sound like, okay? Here's a C natural minor scale. And here's a C harmonic minor scale. actually sound quite different from one another just because we have that raised seventh degree. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave a comment to say hey. And if you're new here, hello and welcome. I post one video a week and I would love to have you subscribe if you are thinking about it. Make sure you turn on the little bell notification button because otherwise you may not know when I upload a new video. And last but not least, if you want to practice what we learn in this video, I have printable PDF practice worksheets as well as a printable PDF summary of this video. You can download those in a link in the description below. All right, moving on. Now let's check out the C melodic minor scale. Now I want 
want you to compare the melodic minor scale, the C melodic minor scale, to the C natural minor scale, okay? And I want you to look at them and see which notes are different, okay? So we have C, that's the same, D is the same, E flat's the same, F's the same, G is the same. Ah, here's where it gets different. We have, instead of A flat and B flat, we have an A and a B. So we would say that we have a raised sixth and seventh degree in the C melodic minor. So what that means is that from C natural minor, we're taking the sixth and seventh notes, or sixth and seventh degrees of the scale, and we're raising them by a half step, okay? Because when you go from the note A flat and raise it a half step, you get to the note A, and that's what we have here. And when you have the note B flat, when you raise that up a half step, you get to the note B. So the C harmonic minor only has a raised seventh, but the C melodic minor has both a raised sixth and a raised seventh. Now the thing that's unique about the melodic minor scale is that it only has a raised sixth and seventh degree when it's ascending, okay? So when you write or play a melodic minor scale descending, you actually just play it as a natural minor scale. So let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So if I were to play the melodic minor scale in C, C melodic minor scale, both ascending and then descending, it would sound like this, okay? So when I'm ascending, so I'm going from a lower note to a higher note, I'm gonna first just play it as a normal melodic minor scale like that. So I would play C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, and C, okay? But then if I were to play it descending, I'm not gonna play these notes. I'm actually just gonna to revert to the natural minor scale and play this going down. So I'm starting on C, then I would play B flat, A flat, G, F, E flat, D, and C. Now, I know you might be thinking, okay, why on earth would a scale have different notes depending on if it's ascending or descending? Well, next week, I'm going to be posting a video about why there are three variants of the minor scale, okay? And I'll also be talking about why the melodic minor scale changes when it's ascending versus descending in that video. And once I upload that video, I will post a link to it in the description below of this video. I actually think it's really, really important to talk about why there are three minor scales, because if you understand the why behind them, it makes it a lot easier to remember the three different scales and what they can be used for. To be honest, when I first learned about minor scales, I never could remember which was which, but once I learned why there are these three different variants of the minor scale, it all became a lot more clear and easy to remember. So I don't want my videos to be too long, so I'm separating the material into two videos, but definitely check it out next week once I post it, because I think it's super important to understand. So we said the melodic minor scale only has a raised sixth and seventh note when it's ascending, but when it's descending, it's just like the natural minor scale. I know that sounds really crazy, but honestly, you don't really have to worry about that too much unless you're studying music at a university and you're gonna be getting quizzed on it. It's a very much a classical thing. And um, there is actually a scale called the jazz melodic minor scale. And in this scale, you just play the exact same notes um, in the melodic minor scale, both ascending and descending. So you would play C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B, C, ascending. This is for the jazz melodic minor scale. And then when you're descending, you would also play the exact same notes. C, B, A, G, F, E flat, D, C, okay? And if you're a jazz musician practicing the melodic minor scale, you would maybe most likely just practice this scale instead of the normal melodic minor where you uh, change to different notes when you're descending. And to be honest, when I practice the melodic minor scale, I practice the jazz melodic minor scale instead, so I don't have to deal with changing the notes when I'm descending. It's definitely good to know that the melodic minor scale technically reverts back to the natural minor scale when it's descending, but depending on what kind of music you play, it might not actually be that useful for you to practice the scale that way, and you might just prefer to just play the jazz melodic minor scale instead, because it's a little bit simpler just to have the same notes ascending and descending. Now, just to clarify, I'm definitely not saying that you shouldn't practice your melodic minor scale differently ascending or descending. You know, um, if you're a classical musician or uh, if you are studying music in school or if you really like to do things by the books, um, then maybe you would enjoy playing the melodic minor scale uh, correctly, which would be different um, when it's ascending or de descending. What I'm saying is that if you are not one of those types of people, let's say you play a different genre of music, 
um, it might not be as necessary. And if you happen to find it extremely confusing and annoying that it is different ascending and descending, maybe just practice the jazz melodic minor scale instead. You know, the worst thing is to get discouraged because something is frustratingly difficult. Now, I know it might feel really overwhelming having these three different minor scales, but really, I don't think you should think of them as three different minor scales, okay? I think it's a lot easier just to think of the minor scales as having a flexible sixth and seventh scale degree. Because the primary difference between a major scale and a minor scale is the third degree, or the third note. You know, if you look at these scales, okay, you can see that the one note that all three of these minor scales have in common that differs from the major scale is the note E flat. See how all three of these scales have the note E flat while the major scale has the note E? And that's because this third degree, the third note in the scale, is really, really, really important when it comes to distinguishing if it's major or minor. So this is really the note that tells us if if a scale is major or minor, okay? So what I'm trying to say is all of these minor scales are exactly the same up until the last two notes, right? These, all three of these minor scales all start with the notes C, D, E flat, F, G, right? C, D, E flat, F, G, C, D, E flat, F, G. They're all the same up until that point. The only thing that's different about them are these sixth and seventh degrees, okay? So with the natural minor, they've been flattened from the major scale, okay? And then with these, we have, when, if we were, you know, compare them to the natural minor scale, we have a raised seventh, and then in the melodic minor, we have a raised sixth and seventh. So, so those notes are flexible, okay? But these are all set in stone. You know, scales don't exist to confuse and torture us. They're actually supposed to help us. And in my next video that I'm going to be posting next week, I'm going to be explaining in a lot more depth how these three different scales can help us, okay? So if you're just beginning to learn your minor scales, I would recommend you start by learning your natural minor scales, okay? And then just keep in mind that the sixth and seventh notes in those scales can be raised if desired, okay? Then once you're confident with your natural minor scales, you can begin practicing the harmonic minor and the melodic minor scales, okay? So there's a reason why we practice these three scales separately, but as I said, I'm gonna get into that in the next video. Now, how do we figure out the notes in a natural minor scale? Well, there are a few ways, but I think the easiest way is to think about how it differs from the parallel major scale. And another way to think about it is uh, you would memorize the order of half steps and whole steps in a natural minor scale. And I'm gonna show you both of those ways. So first let's look at how to find the natural minor scale from its parallel major scale. So let's say I wanna figure out the notes in a D natural minor scale, okay? Well first I would look at the parallel major scale, which is D major. Okay, so the parallel major scale is just the major scale that has the same root note. For example, the parallel major of G minor is G major. The parallel major of F minor is F major, etc. So if we want to find the notes in a D natural minor scale, we are going to first look at the parallel major scale, which is D major, right? So let's first write out the notes in a D major scale. So here I've got the notes in a D major scale, right? I know that. And so using that, I'm going to figure out the notes in a D natural minor scale. So using the parallel major scale, I'm going to figure out D natural minor scale. And it always follows the exact same formula, okay? So if we're getting the natural minor scale from the major scale, we're always going to flatten the third, the sixth, and the seventh notes in the scale, okay? So. The first two notes are going to stay the same, D and E are going to be the same. Then when we get to the third note, D, E, F sharp, right, we're going to flatten it, okay? So what happens when we flatten an F sharp? Here's F sharp, we move it down a half step, it becomes F natural. So this turns into F natural, no longer F sharp, okay? D, E, F, then the fourth, fourth degree or the fourth note, G, stays the same, right? So we only, we only flatten the third, sixth, and seventh, right? What about the fifth note, A? That stays the same, right? Ah, okay, now we're at the sixth note, B. So we need to flatten the sixth note. So what happens to a B if we flatten it? A B turns into B flat, right? So we have B flat. And then the seventh degree, which is C sharp, 
we're gonna flatten that too, right? So C sharp, when we flatten a C sharp, what happens to it? Turns into C natural. So C natural. And then we can write the D at the end again if we want. So, so that is how we figure out the notes in the D natural minor scale using the parallel major scale. So we just take the parallel major scale and we flatten the third, sixth, and seventh notes in the scale. And it always works out this way. So no matter what the root note is of your scales, you're always just gonna flatten the third, sixth, and seventh, and you will get the natural minor scale. Now, just for kicks and giggles, let's also write out the notes in the D harmonic minor scale, okay? So do you remember how we alter the natural minor scale to get the harmonic minor scale, okay? Do you remember? So from the natural minor, we're going to raise one of the notes, move it up one half step, okay? We're gonna move one of these notes up a half step. So do you know which one it is? It's the seventh degree we move up a half step. So that note C, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, C, moves up a half step. So what is our scale gonna be? The harmonic minor scale is gonna be D, E, F, G, A, B flat, then C sharp, and then D, right? Because if we raise C, there's my C, if I raise it by a half step, goes into C sharp, okay? And that is a D harmonic minor scale. Now, some of you have maybe never seen a scale before that has both a flat and a sharp in it, okay? Um, but this is actually the correct way to write it, okay? So, because when we get into these harmonic minor scales and stuff that's not just a natural minor scale, then we can start to see scales that have both sharps and flats in them, okay? So, just if you run across that, it's not wrong. That is really what it is. Okay, and last but not least, what about the notes in a D melodic minor scale? Do you remember what we alter from the natural minor scale to get the notes in a melodic minor scale? So to get the notes in a melodic minor scale from our natural minor scale, we're going to raise the sixth and seventh degrees of the scale, okay? So that means all the notes at the beginning are the same. So we still have a D is the same, one, two, three, four, five, okay? And then when we get to the sixth degree and the seventh degree, which are B flat and C, we're going to raise those by a half step, okay? So what happens when we raise B flat by a half step? It turns into B, right? And what happens when we raise C by a half step? It turns into C sharp, okay? C sharp and then D. And these are the notes in a D melodic minor scale. Now, quick little quiz question. Do you remember which one of these three minor scales has different notes uh, depending on if it's ascending or descending? Do you remember? It's the melodic minor scale, right? So what would be the melodic minor scale descending, okay? We know that it, when it's ascending, we play this, right? D, E, F, G, A, B, C sharp, D, right? That's it, ascending. But when it's descending, what notes do we play? We play the notes in a different one of these other scales. When it's ascending, we play the D melodic minor, and when it's descending, we play the notes in the D natural minor scale, okay? So it would sound like this, descending. D, C, B flat, A, G, F, E, D. Just like that. So if I were to play the D melodic minor scale, both ascending and descending, it would sound like this. D, E, F, G, A, B, C sharp, D. D, C, E flat, A, G, F, E, D. Now I'll play it without talking. And let's listen to what these other scales sound like as well. So let's play our D natural minor scale, okay? Now let's play the notes in a D harmonic minor scale. And 
just for fun, I'll also play a D major scale so you can hear and compare. So remember, the way we found the D natural minor scale from the parallel major scale was we flattened the third, sixth, and seventh notes in the scale, and then we got our natural minor scale, okay? Let's do one more like this, because I think it's good to go through these examples. Let's figure out the notes in an E minor scale. So first, what are the notes in an E major scale? I'll write them out. Now, what do I do to figure out the notes in the E natural minor scale? I'm going to take my E major scale and I'm going to do what? I'm going to flatten three notes. Do you remember which ones? The third, the sixth, and the seventh. It's always that pattern. It's always the third, sixth, and seventh get flattened. So what is the third note? The third note, one, two, three, is G sharp. What happens when we flatten the note G sharp? It becomes G. So we have the third note is G, right? Then fourth note's the same, right? What about the fifth note? Is that the same? That's the same. I'll write in the first and second as well. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Now the sixth note, what happens to that? That one we flatten too. So C sharp turns into what? When we flatten the C sharp, it becomes C natural. So we got a C natural. And then what about D sharp? That's the seventh degree. Do we flatten that one? Yes, we do. Remember, we flatten the third, sixth, and seventh. So the seventh note, D sharp, turns into new D sharp turns into a D, right? And then we can write the E again if we want to at the end. So these are the notes in our E natural minor scale. What about an E melodic minor scale, okay? Let's figure out that, so. So how do we find the melodic minor from the natural minor, okay? So we're gonna ignore the major scale here. We're just how does the melodic minor scale differ, differ from the natural minor scale? Do you remember? It has a raised sixth and seventh, okay? So, which are the sixth and seventh? That's C and D, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So those two notes are gonna get, both get raised by one half step. So what are those two notes gonna become? They're gonna become C sharp and D sharp, right? And the rest of the notes are all the same, so E, F sharp, G, A, B, and we get the E at the end again. And there you go. These are the notes in an E melodic minor scale. What about an E harmonic minor scale? So what about an E harmonic minor scale? How does the E harmonic minor differ from the E natural minor? We're gonna raise just the seventh degree, so only one note, so that note D goes from D to, if we raise D by a half step, it turns into D sharp, right? So the rest of it's the same. So we have E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D sharp, and then E. Got it? And which one of these scales has different notes when it's descending? Do you remember? Is it the natural minor, melodic minor, or harmonic minor? It's the melodic minor, right? And what would those notes be when it's descending? Which, it goes back to one, it uses the notes from one, another one of these scales. It uses the notes from the natural minor scale. So when it's ascending, it plays these notes, and then when it's descending, it plays those notes, right? So when it's ascending, it's E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. And when it's descending, it's E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E. That would be our E melodic minor scale ascending and descending. It uses the, those notes for the ascending and then it goes to the natural minor notes when it's descending. And just to throw you off a little bit, when I wrote out these E minor scales, um, I switched the order of them. So in the past I had written the harmonic minor first and then the melodic minor. And this time I wrote the melodic minor first and then the harmonic minor just to keep you on your toes a little bit. And just for fun, and because it's good for our ears, let's listen to the notes in an E harmonic minor scale, okay? E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D sharp, E. E, D 
sharp, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E. And we can also listen to the E natural minor ascending and descending as well, right? It sounds like this. E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, E, E, D, C, B, A, G, F sharp, E. Cool. And just for fun, we'll also play the E major scale. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, E, D sharp, C sharp, B, A, G sharp, F sharp, the order of whole steps and half steps in a natural minor scale. And we're going to use the E natural minor scale as our example. Um, so we're going to basically determine what the distance is between every single note in the scale, and that is going to be telling us what the pattern is for all natural minor scales, because all natural minor scales have the exact same pattern, it's the same order of whole steps and half steps that create it. So first we're going to look at the distance between the root and the second note in the scale. So the note E and F sharp. Is the distance between E and F sharp a whole step or a half step? We can look on our piano if that helps. So from E to F sharp, is that a whole step or a half step? That's a whole step, right? A half step would be that, but we have a whole step. So I'm going to write a W like that for whole step, okay? Now let's figure out the distance between F sharp and G, okay? So F sharp and G, is that a whole step or a half step? Here it is on the piano, F sharp to G. Is that a whole step or a half step? That's a half step, right? So I'm gonna write an H for half step, okay? What about G to A? Is that a whole step or a half step? G to A, that's a whole step. Okay, what about A to B? A to B, whole step or half step? That's a whole step, all right? What about B to C? B to C is, what's that? That's a half step, okay? What about C to D? C to D, whole step or half step? It's a whole step, okay? And last but not least, what about D to E? That's a whole step. So, our pattern, um, I'll write it down here actually so we have it just written here. So I, I like to always write R first so that we remember the, to count it from the root note. So first we have the root note, then we have whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. So it's root whole half, whole whole half, whole whole. So we could figure out the notes in any natural minor scale using this formula. So as long as we know what the root note is, uh, if we just plug in this formula, we can figure out all the other notes in the scale. So for example, let's say I wanna figure out the notes in an A minor scale, okay? A natural minor scale, okay? Uh, this, this formula is just for natural minor scales. So let's figure out the notes. So we're gonna start with the root is A, right? Then a whole step up from A is what? So here's A, I move up a whole step, I get to the note B, right? So B, then if I move up a half step, from B, right? What's a half step up from B? It's C. I've got C. Then I'm gonna move up a whole step from C. So a whole step up from C is D, right? Then a whole step up from D is E. Then a half step up from E is what? Here's E. That's a half step up, it's F. Then a whole step up from F is, here's F, G, and a whole step up from G is A. And we get back to the root again. And voila, those are the notes in an A natural minor scale. So you can always plug in this formula of whole steps and half steps to figure out the note in any natural minor scale. Or as I said, you can also flatten the third, sixth, and seventh notes in the parallel major scale. So what would the parallel major scale, so A major, the notes in an A major scale are A, B, C sharp, 
D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and A, right? So the third, sixth, and seventh, so that would be one, two, three, C sharp, that's gonna get lowered, right? By a hat, we're gonna flatten the third, flatten the sixth, and flatten the seventh, we get, so C sharp turns into C, three, so one, two, three, four, five, six, F sharp turns into F when it gets flattened, and then the seventh degree also gets flattened, G sharp turns into G, and then the rest of the notes are the same, A, B, D, E, and A. And hey, look, it's another way to get to the A natural minor scale. So we can use this formula of whole steps or half steps, or we can flatten the third, sixth, and seventh from the parallel major scale. I hope this has helped you guys. Definitely check out my other video that goes into why we have these three different types of minor scales. I'm talk, gonna talk about why they're formed. And I promise you, once you watch that, it's gonna be a lot easier to remember them because it's really hard to remember them before you know why, okay? So definitely check that out. I'm gonna put the link in the description below. I'm also gonna upload it next week. And that is it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you like the video, leave a comment, say hey, give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. And that is all. Oh, and if you wanna practice what we learned in this lesson, I have a printable PDF worksheet as well as a printable PDF summary of everything we learned here today as well, which you can download in a link in the description below. That is all. Thank you guys so much. A big thank you, especially to my Patreons who make it possible for me to make these videos for you guys. Um, their support means everything. And if you would like to support my channel as well, a link for that is down below too. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day or night, and I will see you next week.